Hi, it's Nell, and I'm sort of on a houseplant roll these days. And today it is all about Chef Lara Amate Care, so stick around for that. So I have the gorgeous plant a bit into view right now. I will focus on it in a bit, but first of all, I want to say that it is really windy today. Hopefully it's not going to... Uh, affect this video too bad that's why i'm over here i don't want the curtains blowing last last couple of videos it was the cicadas in the background now it just happens to be a windy afternoon but i have to get this filmed and i've already done a post and a video on this plant but it was quite a few years ago and i just want to do you know another one because now especially i'm doing more details in in the blog post so I just want to do an updated one for you because it is such a great plant. And as usual, there is a blog post to go along with this video, which will have more information for you. So be sure to check that out. The link will be down below. There are quite a few Chef Lara's on the market. When I was in the interior scape trade, we used to spec the, um, either the Tubidanthus or the Chef Lara Actiniophila a lot. There's also a dwarf a dwarf chef lara, which is arabicola, but the amate, the one I'm talking about today, was bred from tissue culture. So it's a selection of the um, actinia phyla, but it's bred to be better with some certain characteristics, which I will tell you about later on. And this here is really funny, this pamphlet here, because when I was in the interior scape trade in San Francisco ages ago, I used to carry around this booklet to show to my plant, uh, my, my clients. I showed it to my plants. <laughs> I showed it to my clients about my plants. And this here is the Schefflera actinophila. And over here is the Tubidanthus. Just so you can see, these two are actually still around. The Tubid, as we call them Tubids, is, um, it's actually got a very rangy, crazy growth form to it. I, lo I love it. Uh, they uh, grow outdoors in Southern California, by the way. So here we go. We'll focus on this lovely plant for a while. So I'm going to start with form. It is best as a floor plant. It also um, takes up quite a bit of width. So it's not for narrow spaces, not like the Janet Craig that, that I showed you about a month or so ago, which is just tall and narrow. It um, has a nice form. It was bred for a more compact form. Uh, it doesn't grow quite as loose. It has beautiful, glossy foliage and an overall beautiful shape. So in terms of size, this one pretty much maxes out indoors at about 10 feet outside. It can get taller. Um, this one is in a 10 inch pot, mine. Um, I've also seen it in a 6 inch pot, an 8 inch pot, a 10 inch pot, and a 14 inch pot. And as it gets taller, it gets a little bit wider too, just because those gorgeous big leaves do tend to spread a little bit. So for the growth rate outdoors, it grows fast. And indoors, it grows moderate to fast. And by the way, I've had this one for about a year. And I did have one in Santa Barbara for about four years, but I left it behind when I moved here. Actually, I gave it to a friend. Here you go. And this plant does give you a really beautiful tropical feel. The uh, leaves are a little bit spotted. I've been meaning to clean them and to do a video about that. And I haven't done it because I am going to do a video about cleaning houseplant foliage. That'll be coming up. Uh, who knows when, but soon I hope. Oh, yes, I do feel as though I'm in, in the jungle here. Um, so in terms of exposure, this plant is a good medium light plant. Um, it can also take lower light too. It just doesn't look as good and it won't grow as fast. It'll do highlight also. Just don't put it in a hot window where it'll burn and no place close to that um, and of course the more light it has a good good stronger light it has the faster it will grow and I just wanted to add in that I have this 
plant um, near a window in the bedroom. And what I do is I, I rotate it about every three months because it's only getting light for, for, from one side. And these will start to grow. If you don't do that, they'll just start to grow towards, towards a light source. So if you can, r rotate your plant and that way it'll get the uh, sun it needs or, or the light it needs from all sides. Watering. Like most house plants, this does not like to be constantly moist, so you want to let it dry out almost completely, not go bone dry, but almost to almost completely before you water it. Again, um, in the summer here in Tucson, I am in the desert. It's very hot. Actually, it is like 108 today, so if I all of a sudden keel over, no, <laughs> that's why, no. Um, so in, in, the, in the summer here, I'll water it like every seven days. But in the winter, I will back off to every nine to maybe 12 to 14 days, you know, depending on how much sun and, and what the temperature is doing. I've done a post called Houseplant Watering 101. It has a video too, so I will leave that link for you so you have a, a reference to that. And you don't want to keep it too moist constantly because this one is subject to root rot. Um, it is more resistant to leaf spot than the uh, actinophylla, but it can still get it if it's like too moist. So don't, um, so don't overwater this one. It will not like it. Temperature. As I say about all the house plants, if you're house is comfortable for you, then it will be for your plants also, and the, and the amate is no exception to that. Outdoors, it can grow, grow, grow outdoors in temperate climates year-round. It just doesn't like to go below maybe 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Fertilizing. I haven't fertilized my house plants in the past. I've just done the um, small layer of worm compost and the small layer of compost in the spring and then watered that in. I just have started to feed my house plants once a year with this with this concoction that I have you know worked up. I will let you know how that goes. I will do a video about that for you. But in the meantime, um, kelp is really good for house plants and I just happen to have my kelp here because that is something I'm using in that blend that I was just talking about. I thought, well, maybe because it is such a strong climate here that I would start to fertilize my container plants and my house plants once in the summer after I compost them in the spring. But now back to the kelp. You can do kelp, you can do fish emulsion, or you can also do a balanced house plant fertilizer for this. In the spring is a great time. You can do it again in the summer, mid to end of summer. If you think it needs it, generally they don't. Um, but you just don't want to fertilize in the winter time because the plant is resting. And you don't want to rev it up with a lot of fertilizer when it's trying to have a sleepy time. <laughs> no coffee at midnight. In terms of soil, any good organic potting soil will be just fine. I am now using, um, it's called Smart Naturals by Fox Farm. It has a lot of good stuff in it. I will leave a link to it in the blog post. Um, I'm also going to put a little bit of um, Coco Qua in there too because house plants love Coco Qua because it lightens up the soil a bit. Uh, yet it's rich and it also drains really, really well. In general, any good quality potting soil, preferably organic, that is suitable for house plants. It'll say if it is suitable for house plants on the bag. That is what you want to use. Humidity. Schifflaras are native to the rainforest, so uh, they like some humidity. That's what they would prefer. But nonetheless, they seem to do fine in our home environments. Our homes aren't necessarily 
all that all that humid because we use air conditioning and heating. But as you can see, mine, that's why I, I, I focused in on it. As I said, I've had this plant for a year or so, and there are no brown tips on it at all. And we've had quite a hot summer, <laughs> so, but, um, so it will handle the dryness in our homes. If it is looking a bit stressed and you think it is caused by lack of humidity, you can always mist it or you can fill a tray with pebbles, put some water in that, and then put the plant on top of the pebbles. Just make sure the bottom of the pot is not touching any water, just in the pebbles. Pruning. Pruning on this plant is done mainly for the purposes of propagation and either to control the um, width or the height. For instance, my ceilings are nine feet tall, in the bedroom anyway, and probably at like seven and a half to eight feet, I'm going to tip prune it. Let's see if we can get this back here. So what I will do is I will probably just prune about right here and take this part off and then that way it's going to keep it from growing too tall, at least for a while, which leads us into propagation. And let's see, um, tip prunings, I mean tip cuttings, you could probably propagate this plant from tip cuttings. I have done the Schefflera arbicola from tip cuttings in propagation mix, but you would probably have to take it here because you can't get too far down into the stem or maybe here. If anybody has done it, please share it in the comments down below. So if you have done a, a mate from tip prunings, tip cuttings. <laughs> That's why filming in the heat is really hard, but, but I just like the light outside. So anyway, uh, but I have, um, I, I have propagated a, a tubidanthus by air layering. And if this plant were to get too tall and too big and too crazy, then I would do this by air layering too. And I'm just about to uh, film a video on air layering a ficus elastica, so you'll get what I mean by, by air, air layering. So pests. This one is susceptible to scale and mealybugs. Um, the original Schefflera actinophila was very subject to spider mite. This one has been bred to be much more tolerant of spider mites. It's not completely resistant to it, but it doesn't get it nearly as readily as the other one did. And I have also seen Schefflera's with thrips. Now I have done videos and posts on all of these pests. So I will leave the links, links to them in the blog post so you can identify them and take action. Pets. This plant, like the other Schefflera's, is considered to be toxic to both cats and dogs. I will leave the effects this plant has in the blog post. I go off of the ASPCA website. It'll tell you if it just like ir irritates the mouth, if it's um, it'll if if it'll cause them to you know th throw up. Well, what effect if it'll have a lot more serious effects on them, it'll tell you what effect this plant will have. On your pet, me, I don't have to worry because my two cats don't chew plants, so I can have all the plants I want, but if yours do, just be sure to check the site to see what effects it will have on them. And actually, more plants, more house plants are toxic to pets than non-toxic. I've also done a blog post on that, what plants are safe for pets, so I will leave that link for you also. And I also want to tell you that this is in my houseplant care book, Keep Your House Plants Alive. Um, I will leave the link to that down below 
also for you. I'm going to run through fast a few things which are good to know. There will be more details on them in the blog post. If your plant has yellow leaves, it is probably due to watering, either, either over watering or too dry. If the leaves are falling off green, then it probably needs more light. And if the leaves are spotted with black or and or brownish, then it is probably too wet. If you buy this plant small and you expect it to stay small, it won't. As I said, it's not for tight and narrow spaces. It is subject to a root rot, and that'll bring on powdery mildew and leaf spot. Even though this is bred to be more resistant to it, it is not completely resistant. So if you give it too much water, it will get that that leaf spot that Schaeffleras are known for. And this plant was bred from tissue culture, not seed. So it is a better version of the original, as I said. And it um, stays, um, it, it's a better plant overall. It has a stronger root system and it is more, more resistant to the spider mites and the leaf spot. And it's got that better form. Time to wrap this up because the wind is really picking up. <laughs> but anyway, um, I hope you have found this video to be helpful. And I have a lot more videos coming your way, so stay tuned for those. And I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. Now let's get out in our gardens. I say let's get out in our gardens because this plant can be grown outdoors year round in more temperate climates where it doesn't get below 30 degrees. It is just fine, especially as a container plant. Or for most of you, us, let's get into our indoor gardens and make our worlds or more beautiful place or let's make our homes into a garden and make it a beautiful place. Whew, I think I need a, a glass of cold water. <laughs> So as always, I thank you so much for watching. Come back for more videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.